Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. What do you know about charter schools? Some get high marks for performance. Others have not made the grade and in some cases failed altogether. We'll focus today on these success stories and find out what differentiates success and failure in these schools. With me in studio, Christy Huck is the executive director of the City Garden Montessori Charter School. Stella Irundu is the founding principal of Northside Community School and is currently principal of the Grand Center Middle School. Engen Blackstone is the Concept Schools Regional Superintendent of the Gateway Science Academies of St. Louis. Thank you all so much for being here. Great to have you. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you. Charter schools. Well, Stella, let me begin with you. Why do we need charter schools? Um, I don't think we need charter schools per se. We need good schools. Charter schools came about because our students were failing, and we decided that we want to make sure that they're not failing because the region will suffer for it. Therefore, charter schools were born. Just as simple as that. As simple as that. Doesn't that, Christine, doesn't that take something away from the public schools, however, because the the money to uh, finance these schools come from the same pot, and I would think that the public schools would would suffer. That's a criticism that you get. That is a criticism, and that is certainly a concern that a lot of people have. And um, I don't want to diminish that concern, but I also would say that we are often asking the wrong question um, and making it, and you know, sort of oversimplifying the problem. I think. Um, you know, the question is really about how do we make sure all of our children, and particularly our most vulnerable children, have access to excellent education. And it really isn't about charters versus district. You know, it is looking at our region as a whole and really trying to figure out how we can best serve all children. And how responsive are we then to that, uh, that kind of need? I think, like in all areas, an options is needed in education area too. Uh, it, it is a great competition for a good reason for our students' learning. I think that's the best thing that we need to fight for. And uh, in in charters, charter schools are providing such alternative, alternative to education, better service to our students. I think that's a that's a great need uh, in in this era. Uh, but are they serving the students who need uh, this the most? Here is charter schools are public schools. Let's start from there, mm-hmm. and and we do not have any any specific criteria enrollment criteria. It's non-selective. The students we have is an all spectrum, uh, and the students we have are grades behind to advanced level. So uh, we cannot specifically define like what kind of students attend charter schools, but. Uh, here is the thing, regardless of the level of students we provide to the students that are coming from all different backgrounds and needs, and uh, our goal is to provide and meet their needs at at their own level. Christy, how do they get there? If someone wants to go to your school and they live on the other side of town, how do they get there? Yeah, well, we are actually a neighborhood school, so mm-hmm. we're one of uh, very few charter schools in Missouri that are our neighborhood <clears throat> excuse me, have a geographic target area that we focus on. Um, and that was really, you know, our school was was founded by parents and teachers in our neighborhoods um, who saw, you know, the options in our in our neighborhood um, and, and, frankly, were frustrated um, because our schools were still very segregated racially and socioeconomically, and the outcomes in those schools were very uh, disparate as well. And so parents came together and decided to form a charter school that would focus on the five neighborhoods that we serve in South St. Louis City near the Missouri Botanical Garden. So we actually um, enroll students. So any family um, with a a child entering kindergarten can apply to our school, and then we do a random lottery. So we usually have about two applicants for every spot, and we do a a public random lottery uh, to select the students. Stella, is diversity well served by this whole process? Could be. It depends on where the parents want to send their students. Could be, but but is it being served? The way it's structured right now and with the schools that we have, are they diverse? Somewhat diverse. I think the selection of schools depend on what the parents see for their families. The charter schools are just there to serve. So we are open to everyone. There is no exclusion whatsoever. So if the parents do come with their children, it doesn't matter what their ethnic um, backgrounds are or what 
colored, you know. Mm-hmm. So we really do, uh, we are open to everyone that is ready to uh, enroll in our schools. Um, Chris uh, said something about um, lottery. The lotteries are not fashioned where you exclude anybody. It is first come, first served. Right. And, uh, once At it, least for Northside Community School. Right. Yes. What about sponsorship? Uh, most of them, most of them, I guess, are sponsored by uh, higher education institutions, correct? Yes. Or all of them? Are all of them? All of them are. Huh. And that, uh, by the way, I understand it, it's just to um, keep an eye on us and make sure that we are doing what we propose to do for uh, uh, the area where we serve. Yeah. Uh, Christy, what is that oversight like? Are they, they're keeping their eyes on you. How yeah. does that work? Yeah, well, I want to give a big shout-out to our sponsor, yes. St. Louis University. Yes. Um, That's a smart thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is we have a wonderful partnership with St. Louis mm. University. We were the first charter school that they sponsored, and, and they have taken their role as our sponsor very seriously, which they should. Um, so they have very high uh, standards for our mm-hmm. our performance and outcomes, and we do too. And so we've really worked together to establish what those standards will be, um, and then they do hold us rigorously accountable. Um, but we also enjoy partnership in terms of, you know, we have SLU students who work uh, in our classrooms and are in our school all the time. We have faculty who conduct research and, you know, a lot of program partnerships as well. So it's really kind of best of both worlds. And Angan, if those standards are not met, what happens? As if, as if we don't know. <laughs> uh, at least it's not the case for us, for the K-2 Science Academy for, and other schools uh, or here. Uh, accountability is a big thing. And uh, of course, the sponsor is one. Uh, it's, it's also one of the questions about the charter schools. Are they accountable, held accountable to the high standards? And then when I talk about it, I say like, Yes, in many ways. It's not just the state as the sponsor. And in my case, it's the management organization, concept schools, and, and plus the school board. So I kind of like feel like there's a lot of accountability measures there. It's not just the state, but many other uh, steps in, involved in there. And uh, basically, charter schools are on contract, and, and we are the, – the statement that I make is that Charters exist to make a difference, and we are always working hard to make that difference in our accountability measures and student achievement, too. How many charter schools have failed? Does anyone know in the, in the years that they've been in existence here? Do you know, Stella? No, I haven't taken count of that. And, and the reason being that it's not the failure, it's the, the, the hard work of continuing to do well for the region. And... Um, for for our our sponsor AMSO, um, I I worry sometimes if I'm doing the right thing and the school is doing the right thing, but they are also coaches. Our sponsor Bill Mendelson comes around and just coaches you on how uh, the things that you're doing and then pat you on the back so you know you're doing the right thing by the staff, by the parents, by the students, and when the annual review comes up. We actually study it as a study group and know what we see how the, our charter is grading us. It is very important to know that we're just not out there doing whatever we want, that we are regulated, we, we, our standards are set for us, and we also set standards for ourselves to reach uh, our children and to do the best thing for them. Uh, Go ahead. I'm so sorry. if there is a number of failed charter schools, I'm not aware of it, and I really don't think that is an important question. I think what is important is to is to provide going forward uh, the best educational opportunity for children in the region. Well, I think it may be important because uh, it, there is a public impression when we hear that one has failed, and you know obviously you need public support for what you're doing, Christy. I'll put this to you. Uh, that public impression impression has to hurt all of you who are doing well. It is certainly challenging. Um, And I will say, you know, education is a very complex um, system. And so, you know, I mean, charter schools are generally small entities um, with not a lot of resource. Um, And and so we, in some ways, have to strive to do more with less. Um, And I think, you know, all of us who've gotten into this this work are up for that challenge. Um, but it is extremely challenging. And I would say that there is relatively little um, 
technical support as well. The Missouri Charter School Association provides a lot of support to charters. Um, but, you know, when a school is is starting out, you know, they're having to figure out everything, um, and there are a lot of things sort of stacked against you. Um, and I, I, I could also talk a little bit about the policy environment. I think the policy environment also could be more supportive of charters, both in terms of uh, offering support but also accountability. Um, what, what policy? I'm not clear on that. Who's establishing this policy? The charter commissioners? Um, <clears throat> actually, the Missouri legislature, <clears throat> excuse me, the Missouri legislature uh, establishes most of the policy that guides us, and then there are also federal policies. So that needs some improvement, do you think? Yeah, I and, would what, say. and what specific area? Well, uh, one piece is is certainly funding. Um, we <laughs> we we do get less funding. Um, the biggest piece of funding that we don't get is around facilities, and so mm-hmm. all of our expenses, including facilities and any occupancy costs, have to come out of our operating budget. If you're not getting the same amount of funding, though, uh, and there's an, a disparity here between what the public school system is getting, mm-hmm. I mean, then they are not they are not equal schools. They're supposed to be part of the city school system, but they're not equal, I would guess. And well, and again, I, I don't want to uh, make it a, a kind of charter versus district piece because I would say mm-hmm. none of us are getting the funding that we really uh, need mm-hmm. to serve children, uh, you know, excellently. Um, but there are some pieces that, you know, in, in terms of, you know, helping charters specifically be successful, that they're, nice. yeah, there's certainly a ways to go. Anchor, in general, what is the relationship between the charter schools in St. Louis and the, and the uh, public school system itself, the St. Louis public school system? Uh, honestly, not much. Uh, the, we are on our own silos and working with the students, uh, the, one of the common thing is our goals, and we believe that both charter schools uh, systems, this SLPS and and charter schools, are doing their best to the serving to the students that we have. Uh, so, but in terms of operations, there is not much interaction in between. I have to take a break. We're talking about charter schools, obviously, and I'd like to invite members of our listening audience to come into the conversation. If you have questions or comments about charter schools, give us a call at 382-8255. That's 382-TALK. Send us an email at talk at stlpublicradio.org, or if you prefer to send a tweet, we'll take one at STL on air. Back in a moment, this is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Thank you for listening to this St. Louis on the Air podcast supported by University College at Washington University with undergraduate and graduate programs part-time evening and online. University College at Washington University offering world-class education within reach. Now back to our conversation with Ankin Blackstone, the Concept Schools Regional Superintendent of the Gateway Science Academies of St. Louis. Stella Irondu is the founding principal of Northside Community School, currently principal of the Grand Center Middle School. And Christy Huck is the executive director of the City Garden Montessori Charter School. Is there any way to determine uh, whether or not the kids coming out of charter schools are actually better educated than the kids coming out of the St. Louis public school system. Do you know, Ankin? One of the criteria that I'm looking for, I think that's the most reliable one, is we are a K-12 institution. We students enrolled in kindergarten, and we had three grade leading class. And the, to me, the strongest indication indicator is the college readiness, what percent of our students are college ready, grade leading, and enrolled in the uh, universities and colleges. That's, to me, for any K-12 institution, that's a great indicator and and we mainly focus on that. Like as Gateway Science Academy, we had three graduating class so far, and we had 100% graduation and college acceptance rate. And we are looking at ACT scores, uh, which is nationally uh, nationally recognized college readiness measure. And uh, I'm looking at our students' ma- uh, ACT score, and it's uh, higher than state and national average. So those are the reliable criteria to me for as a K-12 institution, this are our students are college ready. When they graduate, are they ready for the next step? Christy, what do you say? 
I would agree. Um, and our first graduate is a sophomore in college currently. So there's mm-hmm. still there's still a lot of information to gather. And I think um, it is a piece that uh, it would be great in the, ne- in the coming years to see some deep research done. Um, but I will say, so I'm very proud of our graduates. They are, we have about 50 graduates and they are uh, in uh, high schools across the region doing very, very well. Um, but I will say charter schools, uh, you know, are, are very different. So we are not all you know, the same. And so just like public schools, I think, you know, you'll see, you know, varied results, um, you know, in the different schools. Sella, what are you saying? Well, um, our students are just now um, in high school. Ah. And um, in terms of um, their ability to uh, perform at the high schools where they are, they're doing very well. Um, We even have some students that are, are in um, private school or private high school such as MICDS. So um, their ability to uh, to rise a, a, with the educational system that they have acquired at Northside um, speaks of success to me. And, um, you know, as we now started with our middle school, we will see how many of our students that go from the middle school to the area high schools are just as uh, prepared. We have a couple of tweets here I'd like to to read to you and get your response to them. Uh, Lisa writes, if charters were such engines of opportunity, then Ledoux, Webster, Kirkwood, etc. would be clamoring for them. The fact this isn't the case is an important clue we ought to uh, pay attention to. What do you think, Stella? Well, um, I do remember in the 80s as a classroom teacher where, you know, students that performed on the level of... Um, uh, you know, on on proficiency levels, we are not going to the um, Ladu school districts or any other county school f- from the um, voluntary. Um, what was that? V- the voluntary. Uh, the DSEG plan. DSEG program. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. um, but students that we are we are we are not successful, we are going there because they wanted to be more successful uh, and get the education that will make them successful. Hold that call. What do you have to say? <laughs> and having said that, um, the Ladoux school districts have not failed uh, or have not had the, the needs for their students uh, to need a charter school, but city schools have. And I, I'm not saying that there is that is the only reason why charter schools are here. Uh, that our students are not successful has all kinds of reasons, uh, be it home, be it environment, their neighborhoods, or whatever the reasons are. It is incumbent on the adults in this region to make sure that our students are successful, no matter where they have come from. Ladue doesn't have that need. Uh, Clayton doesn't have that need. So I am particularly interested in the achievement of the students who are in this region that I serve. Christy, what's your interaction with parents? Do you think that uh, you have a, a greater interaction with them and engagement with parents than the public schools do? And again, I'm, public schools, I mean the St. Louis public school system, obviously. Well, again, um, you know, I think lots of public schools have very deep, uh, strong interaction with their parents. I will say um, our school was founded by parents, and parents are extremely engaged in, in really all parts of our school community, and it's absolutely a strength of our school. Mm-hmm. We have another tweet here. Dan is writing to us. Why not focus your energy on improving the public school system? Have you lost faith in arguably America's greatest success story? Engen, do you want to take that one on? Sure. Um, we take a very small fraction of public school students uh, in the state. The student population is 900,000, and the students attending public school is only, only f- give or take 40,000 of those. So we are talking about relatively small pieces, 2.6%, 2.7% when you have the state, uh, consider the entire state. So this exposure, first of all, is not to open to all state students. It's only in St. Louis and Kansas City. When it comes to that, uh, I think with this option, uh, our hope, great hope, is as a public school, we have better interaction and we steal the best practices from each other to make it better for all students. 
I think this is all about it. It's if we if we should put the student in the center of what we do, the student achievement and student service, then we I think we really have to collaborate and 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 pick the best practices from each other to serve better serve students. Uh, that's how we think in terms of our interaction with the public schools overall. Do you want to it's weigh true. in on that, Chris? Stella, go ahead. Yes, it's true. Um, it's not one versus the other. It is us together and learn from each other to make sure that St. Louis region students are well educated. And if you look at 10 years from now, what is the workforce like? Where were they educated? Are they well educated? Can they perform on the level that will put uh, St. Louis um, on this, in the center of growth? And so that's what charter schools are about. And I think that collaboration between the public school and the charter schools are very important. I think the the key players in those in, in the, the two school systems need to talk and get together and make sure that we provide our students the level of good education that they need. Christy, I've heard of charter schools referred to as educational experiments. Uh, is that a valid uh, definition, would you say? Are we still in the experimental stage with uh, charter schools? Well, I think charter schools were created to be somewhat of uh, laboratories for innovation. Um, and the idea was that you know the, the ones that worked really well should be studied and, and replicated. Um, I think you know the, the way charters have spread has not necessarily always, um, looked like that, but it is a goal to really try to bring in a, you know more innovation and and more community kind of input and engagement into the education sector. What do you think, Engen? Experimental stage or beyond that? I think it's beyond, uh, and I, I agree with Christy. It's it's about innovation. We the practices we provide, we're trying to be unique and the, provide the experiences to the students that they have not exposed to in any environment. For example. Like it is, it is not that common to have robotics team in public schools to, and, and given opportunities to uh, students to participate in such a great thing. Uh, but he, in our school, we have we have that, and even we took students to world championship through that. Uh, I think that's that's uh, so rare, uh, and we also have other unique programs that provides different unique opportunities to students. Uh, and I again, it is innovation, not experimental thing to me. Right. right. Um, there's a lot of uh, conversation these days about our education secretary, Betsy DeVos. She's a big uh, champion of charter schools. Uh, but she gets a lot of criticism for that. Well, Chrissy, what's your take on, on the conversation <laughs> at that end? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> have you met her? <laughs> <laughs> I have not met Betsy DeVos. Betsy DeVos and I probably would disagree about many things. Yes. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I think uh, there are some great things about charter schools being expanded. And I think we also have to be uh, thoughtful and mindful of the, the impacts. And so I guess I'll just keep repeating myself. I think we get kind of caught in this either or and scarcity mindset, and uh, and we really need to broaden our our thinking and our uh, conviction to really try to make sure, you know, all kids, and particularly our most vulnerable children, have access to great education. So charter schools are one way to do that. And back to your question about the district, you know, I absolutely support the district, and we strive to partner with the district in lots of ways. And we all should support our our school district. And, you know, for our our neighborhood, um, it felt very important for some of our parents to create another school option. Um, so it's a lot of both and. We have – did you want to say something, Anga? You look like you're – okay, I'll, I'll move on. We have uh, a, another email, this one from uh, Webster Groves. Uh, Anne writes, uh, it's apples to oranges comparing be, comparing uh, charter and public schools because charters can screen out students with disabilities or behavioral problems. You're shaking your head, uh, yeah. Christy. No, that's not actually true. I think that is a myth. Um, that yeah, very that, much so. That is very prevalent. But mm-hmm. we actually have, uh, you know, we're required by law to have fair and equal 
enrollment and access. And I think m- all of our schools have significant special education populations. Um, some some of our schools have significant English language learner populations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody's agreeing. Yes. They're agreeing with yes. that yes. conversation. No, no exclusions. No. Okay, we have a caller. Uh, Tom wants to join us, so let's get him in. Tom, you're on the air. Thanks for waiting. Thanks, Don. I think every decent person is sympathetic to parents who live in uh, poor school districts and and just want their kids to have the best. But there's a big-picture story that we need to be aware of with this charter schools question, which is that there's a a well-funded and very powerful group of people in this country who have a real mania for privatization, and they actually seek to undermine many of our public institutions, like public schools, uh, and make these things fail so that privatization can occur. And uh, in doing so, they really undermine the equality values, you know, equal access to quality education that are fundamental to our Constitution and our country. And... uh, you know, I, I think there are many people who are just trying to do the best for their children, but the big picture is that they are taking money out of public school districts, and people are disinvesting, you know, not only financially but emotionally in the public school system, and that's exactly what these uh, privatization maniacs want. Thank you. Tom, thanks for the call. Stella, do you want to respond to that? Do you agree with him in any, any sense? Um, I disagree because the money that the charter schools get is the children's tuition, whether they were in public school or in the charter school, in a charter school in their neighborhood. There is just that nobody outside the state really actually funds charter schools or a body of people who are separating um, or privatizing schools. We have never met one. They have not knocked on our doors. Uh, the important thing to do here is that there is, there should be um, a union of the, the charter school movement and the public school movement for the betterment of our students. That's just what I think is the main uh, catalyst to growth in our region. Well, Brett on Twitter is writing us, charter schools are only about breaking teacher unions. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with that, too. <laughs> Each teacher should come with a mission to serve children. Right. And the, whether you belong in the union or not, your mission when you we are going to that school to become a teacher should be to serve children to the best of your abilities. Christy, thoughts on that? Well, we have uh, we have committed um, very strongly to to supporting and serving our our teachers as well as possible, and actually have committed to trying to make sure our salaries and benefits are at least comparable to exactly. St. Louis Public Schools. Mm-hmm. Um, I know some charters actually do have union; their teachers are unionized. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I hear that uh, that concern. I don't want to dismiss it, but. Um, I think there are a lot of us who are also actually really trying to create organizations that are very committed to equity. And and can I respond to the other caller? I think it's really important to remember and and highlight the fact that the city of St. Louis had a much larger population decades ago, and therefore the, the St. Louis Public School District, you know, was... You know, I think over 100,000 at one point. Mm-hmm. And I think even in the 1980s was around 80,000. I think so. Um, and so the the decline in population in the city and the district started well before charters began. And I think that it's, it, you know, we, we get, again, stuck in this discussion and debate about charters siphoning off students and, and funding. But the reality is that, you know, many, many families, mostly affluent families and white families, moved to the suburbs and have taken their dollars and their, their children to suburban districts. So I think that if we're going to have that conversation, we need to broaden it and, to, and look historically at what has actually happened. We're going to have to, to wrap this up, but let me ask each of you, and Engen, I'll start with you. Do you foresee a time when charter schools are going to be the way we educate our children, 100%? I, th- I think... Public schools st- will still have place in this. I, I do not foresee that personally, uh, but I do believe that charter school option should be available to all students in the state of Missouri and in all. Uh, but uh, 
personally, I do not foresee that. That's not the purpose. The purpose is just to increase the quality of education in all public sectors, and we are public schools. And and for those two questions, it's again, it's all about the perception. We exist to serve students, provide better quality education, and that's the goal. Uh, and with high expectation, if charter schools do not perform well, we know that they are not allowed to uh, exist for long term. To me, that's a fair call too. Mm-hmm. Also, so uh, I think again, our our standpoint is that like providing alternative option to the parents and students for their students' better education. And personally, my own kids attending public charter schools, and uh, I do believe in our program, and then even for my own kids, that I think that's the future for my kids. What do you think, Christy? Charter schools for for all? Um, I think we will continue to have uh, robust school districts and charter schools, and I think that there's a place for, for both. Right. How about you, Stella? Well, I, I think we will have both, like Chris said. I think that we should share our missions and our standards. If the standards are high enough, people will go to the schools that are nearest to their houses, to their neighborhood. Therefore, we can coexist. All right. Well, let's end it right there. I want to thank you all. Stella Rondu, thank you for being with us. Christy okay. Huck, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Angan Blackstone, thank you for being with us. Thanks as well. for having us. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.